Here's Polly. She's a rare breed Ardenna Bantam and she's the finest mother that any little baby quail could ever hope to have other than a real live quail. I started to look at the possibility of quail eggs as a cure for hay fever some 10 years ago now when we came to live in France permanently. We'd already started to plant up what would become a flower and food forest and Andy had had hay fever since the very hot summer of 1976 and I wanted him to enjoy our garden so we had to think about some solutions. I read that quail eggs had been used since the 12th century in Japan to cure all kinds of respiratory diseases and allergies and so I decided to have a go. I couldn't find any organic eggs so I decided to raise them myself. You're also going to have to have a good relationship with your hen. She has to trust you. It's a big adventure for her. Quails smell different, they look different and they speak a different language to baby chicks and in fact Chicklet, Polly's mother who raised my first quails, she didn't like mice and when the quails hatched they looked very much like mice and she actually picked them up and threw them out of the nest across the room and I had to bring them back and show her that they were in fact baby birds. I took this film when I removed Polly from off the eggs in the morning to take her outside first thing I didn't realise they'd hatched. They hatched rather earlier than I expected. And you must take the hen off uh, because if the hen gets off on her own, you can imagine these eggs are very small and quite fragile when they're hatching. So I used to remove her and that was why I was very lucky to be able to take this film. Uh, you need a very, very speedy hen to look after quail because they are very, very demanding. And our, our denner hens seem to have the personality and the physicality uh, necessary to look after quail. Here on the first day you see the language problem in action. Here's poor old Polly calling the quails to eat and in fact they can't understand but it takes them a very short time. In fact within 24 hours they begin to know exactly what she's talking about. And here you can see by the next day she's already got a very good rapport with the babies. She calls them, they come and also you can tell what a good mother she is because she's actually breaking up all the food for them and warning them not to eat until she's broken that food into small bite-sized pieces. What a hen will also do as well, uh, like a wild bird, she will actually make a paste within her mouth and when the birds are very small, the baby chicks are very small, she'll actually feed them from the beak. This constant communication between the mother and her chicks is very important. At the moment they're in the nest and they're safe but when they go outside, they're going to have to be able to understand exactly what she's saying to them, particularly when she'll be warning them of any danger. This is the third day after hatch. You can see they're already getting very zippy. They're nearly ready to go outside, but I've just got them here in the doorway in the direct sunlight so they can get plenty of vitamin D for the absorption of calcium. In the past, I always put chicks out when it was around about 16 degrees C, 61 Fahrenheit. Uh, now I've got the greenhouses, that's another option, and I know that Polly's first thing when she gets out of the nest, she's going to have a dust bath. And as you can see, it's uh, quite an energetic business, and even little baby chicks, who are a lot bigger than quails, are quite wary when the mother's having a dust bath. So I developed a sort of stratagem within the greenhouse where I put Polly inside a run and the quails outside, so she could have the dust bath and they would still see her and still be able to communicate. Commercial and even backyard quail are often brought up in cages. They don't get outside, they don't fly, they don't do anything, they just lay. And because your quail are going to have a very active life, at this early stage they will manifest any deficiencies that their parents have had in nutrition. They will manifest them by sitting down, limping, even paralysis and these deficiencies can be treated and very effectively and quickly with a good nutrition. If these symptoms occur, feed vitamin B in the form of yeast flakes and selenium in the form of a small amount of grated Brazil nut. And so after a busy day it's back to the nest and Polly gathers them up for the night. She built up such a good relationship with these little quail that she took them into the greenhouse every day, showed them what to eat, showed them how to catch insects and later as you'll see in my other film we actually took her out into the meadow and she could free range with them. 
After those first few eggs that Andy ate all those 10 years ago now, he never had hay fever that summer, and in fact, he never had hay fever again, nor eczema. I hope this film has inspired you to think about raising quail yourself organically. Quail are beautiful little birds. They deserve so much better fate than to be left languishing in a cage as a laying machine. Thank you very much for watching.